Hey there everybody, today I've got Kelly Richardson here uh, in front of some of our entry level machines and do you know since COVID there's been a real renaissance in sewing that we've certainly noticed because people uh, who have never sewn before started making masks and they're just so excited to learn how to sew and how to make all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So today I've got, as I said, Kelly Richardson here from the ABQ Sewing Studio, and she's going to talk about some of our entry-level machines. Welcome, Kelly. Hi, everybody. I would like to introduce you to the Baby Lock. These are the entry-level machines. Now we start right off with the Baby Lock Zest. This is a great machine for beginners. It has your straight stitches and your zigzag stitches, so you've got a little bit of stitches to choose from. It will do stretch stitches as well. So the stretch is built into the stitch when you are sewing things that are stretchy like knits, that sort of thing. Super simple to operate. If I want to adjust the length of my stitch, I'm just going to turn this knob. If I want to adjust what stitch I'm working on, I just line this knob up with whichever stitch I have right here. It has a four step buttonhole and it comes with the regular feet you're going to use. Um, like your zipper foot and your blind hem foot. So um, what is a blind hem foot, Kelly? Uh, a blind hem foot is a foot that gives you some aid when you're actually making a blind hem. And a blind hem is generally the hem you're going to find on the bottom of your pants, down at the, the, the base or, the, the, or on a skirt or something like that where you're hemming it. A blind hem, you actually can't see any of the stitches um, on the outside of the garment. It's All just the like stitching a, is on the inside. A little invisible pick stitch yep, that comes that's through. That's exactly right. Yep. Yeah. And t talk about the four step buttonhole. Like, what exactly does that mean? Okay. I can just zoom in what, here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What a four step buttonhole means is there's actually four steps in making the buttonhole. And it, it guides you through that. There is a buttonhole foot that you put on, and then it guides you through that. So the first step of the buttonhole is going to be the, um, if you're thinking of a buttonhole, the left side of the buttonhole, and it would be the zigzag. Mm -hmm. stitch of the buttonhole mm -hmm. and then it's going to do the bar tack at the bottom which mm -hmm. is the part that goes across both yep so i would move it to here to do the bar tack and then it's going to bar tack uh, then i'm going to go here and it's going to do the other side of the buttonhole with the zigzag yeah and then i can move it back here and it's going to bar tag the top of my buttonhole mm -hmm. so you're gonna you're gonna actually draw your buttonhole on your garment or whatever and then follow the length of that line correct okay yes. that's yep. that's good to know yep. And like what kind of, I'm just going to come in here. I'm on a little roller chair, so this is a bit wobbly, guys. But okay, so we've got a couple different um, positions for the needle by the look of it, right? Yes. Yep. I can do on this one, we basically have a... Oops, sorry. Sorry. Yes. Okay, go ahead. So we have basically a left needle position. Yeah, it just moved, yeah. And I can move that over. When I'm doing my zigzag, I can adjust the width of my zigzag, and then I have to center needle position. Okay, and then it, you can do that for straight stitch too, I presume, right? You can go to one side a little bit. Uh, no, when you're in straight stitch, that's it. You've got center needle position with your straight stitch. Oh, okay. When I'm moving the needle position, I'm actually adjusting the width of my zigzag. The reason I ask is I see an A and a B here, and one seems to be to the side. Yeah, A, a is your regular straight stitch. Shows straight oh. stitch. And that puts you into your left needle position for your zigzag. Oh, I see. You can also do this, this, the straight stitch in left needle position. Yeah, that's what I meant. Okay, sorry. Yeah. yeah, so you've got center needle position and left position for your needle position in straight stitch, and then you adjust the rest for your zigzag. Yeah, that could be handy. It is. And, and that is the entry level machine, right? Yes. Cool. Yep. And also this, this slides off so that you have your free arm for yep. when you're doing those little hems. Yeah. And this is a front load bobbin system. Right, and does it have a feed dog drop on this machine? Uh, not on this machine, but okay. there is a cover that you can cover your feed dogs with. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So if you want to do a little bit of quilting, you need to drop your feed dogs. So if you have a cover, you, you can do it. Yes, you just cover the feed dogs as opposed to having to drop them. Mm -hmm. So you can still do a little bit of free motion stitching on this one. Okay, so let's say you buy this machine and you have some some feet that you've bought extra for it. Mm -hmm. Do those feet fit other machines? Yes. Okay, yep. so you're not wasting your money buying a few different Correct. feet for it. Yep. That's yep. good to know. Yeah, quite a, quite a few of the machines along the Baby Lock line will share feet. Yeah, that's helpful. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Okay, so anything else to tell us about the Zest? Um, it's very lightweight, it right? Is, it's very lightweight. Yeah, it's, so it, it's even um, a great machine to take on a retreat as a secondary machine. Yeah. Uh, and like I said, you can get into your straight stitches, and it's just a matter of doing sliding the knob all the way around. When I want to... 
um, wind a bobbin. I just disengage the needle by pulling that out to wind the bobbin. Okay. So it's very simple to operate. And it has a great big um, spot there to reverse, so oh, that's yes. easy to find. Yep, yep. So not and a little button, you've got a nice big correct. spot. And you can you can reverse on the fly, so you don't have to stop, yep. reverse. You, you can reverse you can just, on the fly. You can be sewing in reverse. Yep. Jeans. Will this machine hem jeans and stuff like that? Yes, it will. Yep. Okay, yep. all right. So this would also be, I think, a good um, entry-level machine for, for kids to start sewing, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. This yeah. is a great one for kids to start sewing. Okay. And, you know, when you get a, when you get a child sewing early enough, it becomes a lifelong passion, something yeah. they can get into again. Yeah, I agree. I, I yep. started sewing um, pretty early. How about you? I, I sewed early and then stopped during the busy years. Yeah. And then, again, picked it up again a little bit later. And yeah. it's absolutely... Yeah. It's what I enjoy doing. Go to my happy place. Yeah, me too. I, uh -huh. I, I must say that um, that's exactly what I do. So I started when I was about 10 and kind of noodled around a bit and uh -huh. it was just fun. Yeah. Yep. And creative. Yes. So it really gets the left brain going and um, just excellent for kids to learn how to do this. And, and that yep. means boys and girls. So don't yep. just think about your girls. Think about your guys too. We have lots of um, gentlemen come in that sew and really enjoy it. Yep. Okay. Let's move on to the next machine. Okay, now the, the next machine up in the line is the Baby Lock Joy. And with this one, you get a few more features. I can also adjust the width of my stitch, which also allows me to have more needle position movement. Mm -hmm. So I can change my needle position a little more. Mm -hmm. I have a good selection of regular stitches, plus I have a good selection of the stretch stitches that, again, allow me to sew... Um, stretchy fabric. It has the stretch built into the stitch. Oh, so if somebody wants to do jersey like t-shirts and stuff like that? Absolutely. Or yep. stretchy scrunchies or... Mm, yep. Okay, yep. so the other machine really didn't have a stretch stitch, did it? Well, it, it does. It has a stretch stitch that will allow you to, to, to um, uh, build the stretch into your stitch. Ah. This one just gives you more options. I see. And um, although these are considered stretch stitches, you can also use them as decorative stitches, yeah. sewing on regular fabric. So you get some like some nice honeycomb stitches here and some pretty stitches that you can also use as decorative, it, not only stretch. Yeah, and could you do like satin stitch on both of these machines that we've seen? Yes, you could satin stitch on both of those. Yep. Okay, so you could do a little bit of applique maybe mm -hmm. that way. Yep, mm, yep. good. Okay. Now the, the Joy mm -hmm. also has the little compartment here so you have your free arm, but this one is a top load bobbin system. Oh, so, so you put your bobbin in from the top. So why is that good? Well, first of all, you can see how much thread you have on your bobbin. Yeah. Where you can't with the front system. These ones also tend to be um, a little more jam proof mm -hmm. when you're when you're using a top load bobbin system. Mm -hmm. And then it doesn't have that funny little hook on it, and people can't get confused as to how it goes in and all that kind of thing. Exactly. Yep. 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 Super simple to to thread. Let me just. Pop that up yeah, there. so you don't have to take your machine apart then to put your bobbin in, right? Right. You just drop the bobbin in the top and there's like a little yeah. hook you push it in and, and that's it. You're done. So you wouldn't yep. have to pull off that free arm thing Correct. to get it in. Correct. Mm. And and one of the nice things too, when you have um, a drop-in bobbin, you're you're less likely to have the thread get sucked back down through the needle. Ah. Uh -huh. Yeah. When you're starting off your stitch. And it looks like this one has a... Um, has it got a threader on it for the needle? This one has a needle threader. Ooh! So that, yeah, the, the older you get, the more you appreciate your needle threaders, absolutely. But this one has a needle threader, so that makes it a little bit easier to thread your needle. In fact, a lot easier to thread your needle. So that just comes down and hooks comes on down the thread. And, yep, hooks into the needle. And pulls it through. And pulls the thread through. Oh, cool. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, we haven't really talked about threading these machines uh, at all. Like, mm -hmm. how does that, like, I know there's numbers on top, right? Yes, all the baby lock machines have basically a, a numbered system that tell you where to put your thread when you're threading your machines. So kind of a one, two, three, four, follow yep. the lines. Yep. Hmm. Same thing with the bobbin on all the bobbin cases, um, covers, sorry, covers, not cases. Yeah. You'll see uh, the way to, to put the thread through mm -hmm. and it shows you on there. Okay. okay. Now I see um, just over the needle path or the thread path there, there's a dial that, that wasn't on the last one. Just beside the baby lock insignia there. Oh, right here? Yeah, what's that? That's that's actually your tension. That's your so tension. So you can adjust your tensions. Oh, yeah, there was one there on was, the other. There's one, one. Sorry. Yep. Okay, yep, yep. Yep, you can adjust your tensions. Yep. Um, so if, you, you know, if you're doing uh, decorative things where you have thicker thread or something like that, you can actually adjust the tension on here to get the perfect stitch. Is that hard to do? No. Nope, it's just a matter of checking and then, you know, adjusting the tension either up or down depending on what you need to do for your decorative thread. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And up is looser uh, or tighter? 
if you're if the number goes up, you are tightening your top tension. Uh, if you put the number down, you are loosening your top tension. So that's pretty easy to understand. Yep. So if it, if you've got too tight a tension, it might the thread might snap, and if it's too loose, it gets loopy. Pretty much. Okay. Yep. 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 That's some of the biggest uh, culprits for when you're checking your tensions. Yep. Yep. Okay, and you've got that great big reverse button again. Great big reverse button. Uh, on this one, you also have the four-step buttonhole, the mm -hmm. same as what was on the, the um, zest. Yep. And you, again, you choose your stitches just by turning the knob. You can adjust the length of your stitch all the way from super tiny. Yeah. So, you know, where you would, in here, you would be doing your satin type stitches or your buttonhole uh -huh. up to basically a basting stitch, which is a four millimeter stitch. Now I see the letters SS on there. That's got nothing to do with what I think it has to do with. Uh, that has to do with your, your uh, stretch stitches. Oh, stretch stitches. I thought no. it was satin <laughs> stitches or, oh, I don't well, know. <laughs> no, stretch stitches. Stretch so stitches. So when I'm in the pink area here. Yeah. That's when I'm working, that's when the stitch dial will show these stitches right here. So it's really very intuitive, isn't it, what goes on with this machine? Very much, yep. Mm. Again, very easy to run. Um, lots of different features on here. Okay, so if I were looking at these two machines, um, like why would I buy the Joy over the Zest? It would depend some on, on the sewing that I'm doing. Mm. Uh, and, and, you know, a little bit on your budget, let's be honest. Yeah. So as, as an entry level, you know, maybe if it's my very first machine and or I want to get something for my child to start, I might start with this machine or I want a secondary machine that I can take to a retreat or something. Yeah. I might start with this one. If I'm ready to step up just a little bit and have a few more features on my machine, uh -huh. uh, you know, like the needle threader, like the ability to adjust the width of my stitch, yep. I might step up to something like this. Okay. So looking at the uh, the zest, the, the one with the green lettering. Yep. Okay. Let's say uh, mom's out there and she wants to buy uh, a machine for one of her kids. Why would she buy this rather than go to Walmart or go to Canadian Tire or go to Costco and buy something there? Oh, well, first of all, you get dealer support, right? You've got the support of us. We show you how to work the machine. We show you how to operate it. And you have um, basically unlimited free lessons on how to operate your machine. That's mm. one of the big things. Uh, one of the other things is is you go to, to, to some of those other machines, and they're basically throwaway models. When they break, you throw them away. Wow. They're, they're not really fixable. And there's there's really like nowhere for you to go to get them fixed. Yeah. So it base that's a lot of what you're you're working on is is the support and having somebody there behind you to to help you with the machines. Yeah, we hear a lot and of, the quality. We yeah. hear a lot of sad stories, don't we? We do. Yeah. 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 And that's just money that you just you know threw out the window, really. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Well, good to know, and I'm glad I asked that question. Yes. Okay. All right. So we got something else to look yeah. at. Yeah. So now if we uh, step up one more, uh -huh. um, we're gonna step over to the zeal over there. Okay. And that is the next one in the baby lock line. Okay. Okay, so now we've got the zeal. Yeah. Not to be confused with the zest. Yeah. <laughs> Two yeah. zeds. Yeah. Um, and it, it looks different, doesn't it? Yes, this one has a, a, a quite a bit different look. Um, for one thing, the, you know, the knobs are down here. Mm -hmm. You have um, more stitches to choose from. Oh, well, let me just have a look there. What do you got? You've got some great regular stitches with some decoratives. You also have more of the stretch stitches to choose from. So you've got some great decorative stitches and some, some extra stretch stitches. Oh. This is also the uh, first one in the line that gives you a one-step buttonhole. So tell us about the one-step buttonhole as opposed to the four-step. So what a one-step buttonhole does is the, the buttonhole foot itself. Yep. Actually, let me just kind of pull the buttonhole foot out here so I can show you. Okay. You'll also see this, this actually has um, a much bigger... Yeah. It's kind of almost like a little extension table. Yeah, yeah, kind of, yeah. There's more at the front, too, yes, it seems like. there is. Yeah, tell me about this um, one-step buttonhole. All right, with a one-step buttonhole, the buttonhole foot actually has a space in the back here. And let me just pull that up. So I would just stick my button right in here. Ah. So the foot basically knows the size of the button that you're going to make. So when I snap this on and I put it into the one-step buttonhole, which is just a matter of putting it right to here and changing my stitch length to where the buttonhole is. So buttonhole, buttonhole. Ah. And you pull down a little lever right here that sets against this lever on the buttonhole foot. So it just kind of fits in there. Just fits right in there. Then the machine actually makes the buttonhole to the size of your button. Too cool. So yeah, it does the bar tacking, it does the left, it does the right, and it bar tacks across the top, and it does it all in one step as opposed to four steps. Wow. 
That is cool. Wow. All right. That you know, I think um, when I started sewing, doing buttonholes, like, you know, you get the whole thing done in there. You've got to put a buttonhole in, and then you make a mess of it because your machine did something <laughs> weird, <laughs> or yeah. you did something weird. Yeah. So this is just um, just real um, nice guarantee of success. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Wow. Um, so, um, feed dogs, uh, the feed dogs, just show everybody where those are. Oh, yep. The, the feed dogs right here are, let me just drop that foot. They are the little grippy things that are right underneath the presser foot on the machine. And they pull the fabric and ahead. That's right. That's what moves your fabric yeah, forward or reverse, depending on if you have the forward or reverse going. Right. And all machines that sew decorative stitches and that sort of thing have feed dogs. Yes. Practically yep. every sewing machine will have to have a feed dog. Pretty much. Yep. Yep. And um, can you can drop those for this if you want to do quilting? Yep. Okay. Yep. It's just a matter of sliding this along, and then in the back of the machine. Oh, let me scoot sorry, over there. Scoot around to the back. There's a little, uh, and you just pull. Oh that yeah, a little lever. The, the little dogs lever. drop there. Let's just do that. Do that for us. Okay. Hang on one second. All right. So there, my dog, my feed dogs are up. Yep. You can see them there. Yep. And I just move the lever. And oh. the feed dogs drop. So now you can push your fabric around without it catching. Exactly. So I can do free motion. Our yep. last machine, the Joy, did that also do that? I forgot to ask you. Oh, yes. The, the Joy has um, feed dogs that drop as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So only the zest the, does not. That's right. The okay. zest is the one that they need to be covered up. Okay. And we've got a, a needle threader here too, by the look of it. Yes. This one also has a needle threader. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Love my needle threaders. So here's tension. Mm -hmm. What's that dial up top there? This one right here? Yeah. This is actually your stitch width. Oh, your width is up there? Yep. Okay. Yep. So this is your stitch These selector. These are your fancy stitches, and yep. the numbers correspond to what's on the front? Correct. Yep. Okay. And, and then this is your stitch length. So again, I can go right down to a satin stitch, all the way up to a basting stitch. And what's this dial over here for, then? This one over here is the downward presser foot pressure. So this is the first machine that has that. Correct. So if you've got some fancy fabrics or heavy fabrics, you can yep. adjust how much the presser foot grips it. Right. How much, how much pressure it puts down on the foot. Cool. Yep. Okay. Wow. That's exciting. That so very exciting. So when looking at the machines, what kind of like price jump do you have? Like starting out that one's around two hundred dollars, right? Something right. in that neighborhood. Yes. Yep. And then you jump and what? Then you you jump about seventy dollars. Yep. To the joy. Yep. And then from the joy to the zeal, there's about a two hundred dollar difference. Okay, so that will give people an idea of what yeah. they can expect. And um, yeah, we've got lessons with all of them. Doesn't matter what price range you're in. Absolutely. And they also come with sixty days of video classes, don't they? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So you can go online and see what other people are doing with their machines and find out some of the basics there too. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. And um, we have a little bonus for our baby lock buyers, right? We do. Let's hear about that. When, with any baby lock machine that you purchase, you also get a 10% discount card for the store for any regular priced merchandise that you purchase in the future. So that's fabric and notions. Correct. 10% yep. off going forward. So that's a really good deal. And of course, yep. you've got Kelly here as your teacher, yeah. <laughs> which is an invaluable asset. So thanks, Kelly. Um, you know, I knew a lot of this stuff, but I just thought I'd ask the questions because I know these are the questions that, that people have in their minds when they're starting out. There's a lot of questions because uh -huh. it's a hobby they are not familiar with. And we just want to let them know that we're here to answer their questions. Yeah, absolutely. They can call anytime. Yep. And we're thrilled to speak to them. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. See you, Kelly. Okay, bye. Happy sewing. <laughs>